Hi guys, Scotty J here from Newcastle Pond Town. Right, any right, uh, this is uh, obviously you know I've done a video with apology to, da to Darren G. People are still trying to say, you know, he's done this on Instagram, he's done that. It's a load of bullshit, I know that, you know, do you know what I mean? It was Sam Walker who started, he trolled us, right? Well, it was my own fault because I put my landline on, on there, so when uh, it was actually Chet Sandu who um, sorted it out and rang us and uh, I got Sam's number and he was a bit surprised but uh, I haven't met Sam but I've spoken to him twice you know um, and I've spoken to Marv a couple of times and I've, uh, I mean, I've spoken to Sean Atwood a couple of times and I'm telling you the truth basically I've got Sean's number I was meant to go on Sean's podcast um, November 2019 but my mum didn't want us to go on yeah so I knocked it back and then obviously she passed away you know and I would have been the first Geordie on it but then obviously Stephen Sayers went on you know so there you have it some people might, might not like my story you know uh, there was obviously things I could have told you uh, there was a lot of things I couldn't tell you because I've only been to jail once, you know. Um, but I don't say that as a bad thing. I think that is a good thing, you know. If you've spent like all, all your life in jail, do you not think you're a bit of a bad criminal? You know. I mean, I've worked since I was 16, you know. And like, you know, sometimes you know the most the most I've made in one week legally was three thousand pound, you know, to come out with. You know, in London, you know, I mean, three grand to come out with, that's fucking wicked, man. You know, wicked, mint, you know, but um, work's quite, it is quite scarce at the minute, you know. Um, I'm, uh, I have got, I, I am still at work, but how long it's going to last, I don't know. But anyway, um I want I want to do a message to Darren G. Basically, look at uh, Darren. Right, I want to give you some advice, but I do. But don't think I'm patronising you because I'm not. Right, look at squash the beef with Marv, squash the beef with everyone. Right, and let's be positive. Right, yeah. Now, if you want, right, yeah, get in touch with me, team up with me, yeah, come to Newcastle, right, because Newcastle, right, it's only got two drug in re drug alcohol rehabilitation centers yeah and one's quite good one's all right but the other one's not the best yeah in my eyes um methadone should be banned right it's a masking agent you know people take it because they know they can take on top um so it should be subutex where it's a block that so they know that they can't take on top you know it's a masking agent and I've heard as well I don't know I've never took methadone I've never took heroin either you know I took Subutex in jail I'll admit that yes but I've never took spice either ever you know um, but um, you know people are you know people that have been doubting me but there's there's, there's photographs on, on me on, on Facebook, right, from 2018, right, with pair of sunglasses on, and I'm at my perfect weight, 13 stone 10, and that's when I was on trend balloon and sip, and I was benching 180k for one to two reps, yeah? And also, people think steroids just make you strong, but they don't, they make you fit as well. So I used to do 10 three minute rounds on the bag, skipping, and also I used to do 100 meter sprints, you know? And uh, I could do the 100 meters in, I think just under 12 seconds. Yeah. Um, because you see, you can run for like an hour, two hours on a running machine, and then you can spin for a bus and you're fucked. So you need, you need that explosive uh, fitness, you know? Because people just think that you stick a needle in your arse and you blow up the 19 stone, but it's not like that, you know? You need a graph for it. You know, you need to eat, um, and you need to work. It helps you, it, it, it repairs you quicker, you know, it's basically. But, uh, and you don't need to be, you don't need to be like 18 stone either to do like 160, 180K, 
Because like I said, there was this big Turk in Gold Star, and he was like six foot three, nineteen stone, on the right, same as me, and he was growling, doing like three plates a side. And me, 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 Broly, Broly was thirteen stone four, I was thirteen ten, and I and, and I, I was benching like hundred and sixty k for ten reps. Me, me, Broly was doing hundred and eighty k for six reps. And uh, I said to the big Turk, and he didn't like it. I went. I said, as you see, it's wasted weight. I says, I says, there you go. I says, you've got like five, six stone on me, and I says, I'm doing more than you, you know. So, but my mate Broly's five seven. He's a gymnast as well. I mean, he was doing 120 k when he was 16 year old. You know, I'm 15 year old. Um, because we used to call him steroid at school, you know. And he always he was, he was always a little bit of a head head of his own bench. But uh, I, yeah, that, that, that's, and I'm, I'm, I am when I go back on, on the roids, like, definitely. Because um, my pal's gym at Baker, both tools, McVickers, it's got a boxing gym there now, you know, so. And obviously people in all saying, like, my mum's not a gypsy, you know, why would I lie about that? My great uh, grandfather was Lewis Walsh, and the were travellers. You know, I don't, like I said, I don't know my dad's true heritage because he was born in the war in 1945. His real mum had an affair with a foreign soldier, you know, because people have often stopped us and went, oh, um, are you white? You know, and even Marvin Herbert thought, like, I wasn't, like, I, like, I was a mixed race, you know. Um, but I've always classed myself as white British, you know. Some people think I'm Portuguese, Maltese, what about Greek, Italian, fuck knows. You know, but uh, we think it's Italian, you know. But uh, and I do have a bit of a connection, like you know, because uh, when we were playing the fucking Italian national anthem with the <laughs> and the Euro, I, I got like I was getting tingles a bit, you know. But uh, obviously, fucking we lost, which was unfortunate. But I think the Italian national anthem, because I first heard it when for uh, the Ferrari on the, uh, the F1, and I think it's fucking wicked, you know. And obviously Lewis Hamilton's my hero, do you know what I mean? Fucking, and once he wins that eighth world title, that, you know, it's Sir Lewis Hamilton, man. You know, because at the end of the day, right, we don't dominate football, right? Like either Ronaldo or Messi is the best footballer in the world, right? Roger Federer, Nadal or Djokovic, tennis, you know, running, fucking Usain Bolt, right? Obviously we've got more for our eye, right? Basketball, you know, Fucking no, fucking. Do you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, we've got someone British who is the best at something. You come from Stevenage, from a council estate, and he's the in Britain. Formula One's British as well, and he is the best at something. You know, a lad from Stevenage, right? With nothing, he started having like three and four jobs. And fucking, I followed him since oh seven May. I knew he was great. He's cool as fuck, man. People think he's ignorant. No, he's not. He's not as cool as fuck. And you know, at the end of the day, he's fucking. He, he, he drives a Mercedes, he gets fucking what? I think it's fucking something like 600 grand a fucking week or something like that, or like a million, pound, million and a half pound a race. You know? Uh, any car he wants, fucking, he crashed his three million pounds on that man. Fucking, he's got a McLaren Senna. He lives in Monaco, he's got he's worth three, four hundred million, he's got a private jet, you know, he's Sir Lewis Hamilton, which which I said this should have happened ages ago because more far I got it, you know. And uh actually uh, my girlfriend is uh, family with uh, Fabulous, who is the um the player manager of the Newcastle Eagles. He's not now um, but he was, and what a nice man he is, very nice man, very, very nice man, I met him, very, very nice man he is. Um, oh, I also met Chaka Hislop as well, I had a game of golf with him once, you know, um, but my favourite Newcastle player was Aspria. I had the uh, the Grand Lecola, um Newcastle top with number 11 on, Aspria. that was when I had my best team man, you know, fucking Pavel, Pavel Cernicek and goal, or Shaka Hislop, and then you had fucking um, Robbie, Elliott, Robbie Elliott, um John Beresford, Philippe Albert, 
big Stevie Watson in the defence. Then you had fucking um, Ginola on the left, Gillespie on the right, then uh, Robbie Lee, um, and then Aspria, and then Ferdinand and Shearer. And that was the best team we ever had. Do you know what I mean? Best team we ever had. We should have won that season, man. Definitely we should have done. But at the end of the day, it's all about money, you see. And I remember there was a time where there was talk of Roberto Baggio coming to fucking Newcastle, man. You know, he was going to... Roberto Baggio was, like, amazing, man. He was like a Lionel Messi. Do you know what I mean? Mad that just wouldn't happen now, man. You know? Fucking... You know, the players now, they're not... You know, I remember Eric Cantona, man, when he karate kicked the bloke in the crowd and that, man. Andrea Kanchelskis from Man U, you know? Fucking Ryan Giggs. Fucking Peter Schmeichel used to run up and fucking, you know, in, in the fucking 90th minute. You know, fucking Bortes, great players, man. Fucking fantastic players. Amazing players. You know, fucking really, really fucking fantastic. But Aspel was a wicked player, man. Wicked. He was my favourite player, like, definitely. 100%. But I, I, if I could, I, well, I'd love to be an F1 driver, like, if I could be anything, oh, definitely. My second favourite's Fernando Alonso. I think, you know, he's just been unlucky. You know, he's a two-time world champion and now he's wasted in the, uh, the French Alpine car because he's got such great talent, you know what I mean? And uh, even when he was at McLaren, when they, were, when they weren't doing very good, he was still getting a million pound a race, man. But they've come good now. Look at Lando Norris. You know, he's doing fucking fantastic. But Max has got a wicked car. And you know, you've got to give it to him, he's done good. He's been in F1 since he was 16 years of age. And fucking, you know, the fight's on now, like, I was fucking, I, honestly, I screamed the fucking house down when, when they went tour to tour. But Lewis had to do it, you know. It's a fast track silver stone, man. They're, doing, they're going around corners at 190s, man. When they're going through maggots and beckets, they've got to flick it fucking right, flick it left, flick it right, then flick it left again, and then onto the hangar straight, and then up to 210 mile an hour, fucking slamming on the brakes. Fucking unreal, that man. Unbelievable, man. All flat out. Fucking, but Mercedes have stopped upgrading the car this year. They're meant to have one more upgrade coming because there's the regulation change next season, so they're going to change, they're changing the, the rules. But Red Bull have got one hell of a car because they've never had good, length, good straight line speed, but now Honda have come good and a half. It's strange, they're always known for their downforce, you know? Because, um, like, Vettel just dominated, didn't he? From fucking two, well, he, he won in 210. You know, I would have liked to have seen Webber won in 210. Alonso should have won it, you know? But, they were, like, Lewis, Alonso, Webber, Vettel, Button, they all had chances of winning that that season. And then Vettel dominated 211. Um, he won 212. He dominated 213, and then obviously Hamilton dominated 214, 215, 216, Nico Rosberg fucking won. Um, and then retired, and I don't know, but the crack is maybe he's fucking, they wanted a German driver to win at least one championship in a German car. And they reckon fucking when Lewis was coming round the bend in Malaysia, they turned their engine up and blew his fucking engine up. I don't know how true it is, but I don't know. But well, we'll never know anyway. But he'll win it. He'll win. He's there for now three years, so he'll win an eighth world championship. You know, he's beat all the records now. You know, he's got seven world titles. Fucking um, what's he got? Fucking nine. Fucking a hundred race wins. Fucking a hundred odd fucking poles. He's fucking, he's dominated everything, man. He's fucking, he's, he's, he's just phenomenal. But anyway, Darren, get in touch, right? And fucking, because my lass is a fucking qualified key worker. Not a textbook one either. You know, she's lived it. So she knows our crack. And we can get people to work there as well. And we can get it, we can, we can, we can, we can easily rent somewhere. Do you know what I mean? And we can get a good place going, man. And we can do it. Because, like, obviously, half of them are just textbook talkers and they just they just hand scripts out. But we'll get people off it, do you know what I mean? So get in touch, mate, get in touch, and we can do this together, yeah? So please get in touch with us, right? Email us, right? All lowercase, Scott Gray, Gray with an E, E for Echo, 
406 at gmail.com right email is darren right email is please mate because we can do good things honestly or i'll come to you in birmingham either way yeah right but get in touch mate honestly because we can do good things right bye for now